Thanks for taking a look at our application for exclusive use of public property. So this is basically a, a permit application you would fill out if you want to utilize, you know, public property for your event, um, whatever that event might be. So festival, um, movie production, 5K fundraising, or whatever it might be. So. Uh, let's just kind of take a quick look through the application uh, and I think I can uh, go over some of the usual uh, uh, hiccups in the process to kind of help you save some time. Page one is just uh, usual general information about you and your event. Um, event name, event location, uh, date and time of the event. Uh, where it says date and time of closure so example would be uh, if you're going to have an event from you know 9 a.m to noon on a particular date you might need depending on the event you might need to close say it's on a uh, in a parking lot or on a city street if you need to block that parking lot off you know the night before in order to ensure that uh, you know cars aren't there the next morning for when you want to start your um, event you would uh, indicate that here so that's that's why that's a little bit different than the actual time of the event so uh, down at the bottom of this page it asks about if you're going to be selling alcohol that is uh that's all kind of changed a little bit so if that's something that you're planning on doing uh feel free to just just email me about that uh, or get a phone call 282-2812 or uh, uh shoot me an email uh, and we can fig help you figure that out um, since alcohol laws have changed pretty uh, pretty drastically in Oklahoma it's a little bit different uh, some of these things are um, like estimated attendance that's just a, um, a, a best guess to help us on the city side of things figure out how to help you um, on this page where it's <clears throat> different services that you can request you, the t most typical one of these that gets checked is um, usually like barricades. The city of Guthrie only provides uh, barricades, cones, road closure signs for nonprofit community events. So if you have um, uh, so an, an exclusive event that's ticketed or something where the community at large isn't um, being invited to attend, um, or some sort of like with a, a movie production, uh, those kind of things, those events will have to provide uh, their own barricades, uh, cones, road close signs, no turn signs, all the different stuff that goes into keeping your location safe from traffic. You'll, you'll be uh, securing your own signage for that if you're not a nonprofit doing a community wide event. Um, if you need uh, police services, EMS services, all these other things uh, can be requested on here. Um, for most of them, uh, there'll be like a, after you've submitted your paperwork, um, I'll have you get in touch with maybe some sp specific departments to, to figure out logistics on different things um, and whether it would be necessary to, to reimburse the city for certain costs. Um, that's kind of on an event by event basis, but uh, just feel free to check off the different items that you need with a description and, uh, and I'll follow up with you about the different uh, elements of that and how to, to take care of that stuff closer to the time of your event. Um, let's see, scrolling down to page three, this is a super important one. Uh, in order to have your exclusive use application approved, you have to provide a certificate of insurance. All the different, uh, the monetary amounts uh, are listed here under number two of this little list. Um, one important thing to remember on your certificate of insurance, make sure that um, usually down on the description um, box of that COI, uh, if you'll have your insurer say that the city of Guthrie is named as additional insured. That's a required little statement that the city um, uh, needs in that description box or listed somewhere on the certificate, but it has to be there. Another thing that's required is a map of uh, where uh, 
the where your event is going to take place um, if you are blocking or barricading um, whether it's a parking lot or a street we need you to indicate uh, on the map exactly where those where the closure is going to occur so where the barricades or cones or signs are going to be uh, on that map please like, indicate that you know what type of uh, you know barricade signage uh, cone what, everything that you're going to have uh, to close down that area just indicate uh, what you're using where it's going to be um, so exactly where uh, which block uh, which parking lot which section of the parking lot um, and then if you are requesting things like like you know electric hookups or water hookups um, uh, we can't necessarily uh, you know obviously move electric hookups or water hookups around um, but we can uh, let you know if you know okay where you're where you're wanting to hook up water to there isn't a, a water source there that kind of thing just to uh, and some of that stuff uh, if you're not sure if you want to avoid some of the um, uh, the back and forth on that you can contact me in advance and we can help you find where electric availability uh, water availability is whether that's you know downtown or at a park or wherever um, um, but yes the Certificate of insurance is a necessity. A map is a necessity. Um, then there's the usual places where you sign out, sign this page for the insurance purposes, but you're also uh, attaching the actual certificate of insurance. A few more places to sign here. And then this is a super important uh, page, worksheet A. So basically, um, for example, if you are going to, um, you know, if, you're, if you want to reserve and close down a, uh, a city block for a festival on that block any um, business building owner resident anyone who uh, would be affected by that street closure uh, those folks need to be contacted by someone with your event and this is, this is a page where they can approve or disapprove uh, of you having your event closed down their block uh, or their uh, their the public property adjacent to their property so um, the important thing here is to make sure that, like on this page that they're going to sign and approve or disapprove if you can be as, as specific as possible up here uh, to let the city know that you've communicated exactly what you're hoping to do and when you're going to do it um, there on the street so just so the city knows that you know the communication process was as thorough as possible with those residents uh, building owners um, business owners everybody on that in the affected area um, one thing I would also recommend is uh, say you speak with this uh, group of business owners building owners whoever on a certain date um, if even if they've signed off and approved a great practice would be to say you have them sign this you know a couple of months before your actual event I highly recommend that you go back you know probably within uh, the, the week of your event and just go back through the list and either contact them or drop off a, a flyer or something just to remind them of what you're looking to do um, because a lot of times someone might sign and approve this thinking hey sure that sounds great but that's going to happen you know three months from now and then uh, you know if they don't get it on their calendar or if they just forget because they've got a lot of things going on just like everybody else does uh, and then you show up and close their street and they've totally forgotten that you'll be closing their street that day uh, it makes for a little bit of conflict so just getting giving them a reminder a few days before your event is a fantastic process that will help keep everyone happy but uh, this page super important just um, not only for getting your uh, application approved but also just uh, keeping everybody happy and informed um, yes so feel free to make as many copies as you want of this page uh, even if you have to you know I know that sometimes it gets pretty complicated to get signatures on one page so if you make up you know a hundred copies of this and have one 
person sign each page. It doesn't matter. Uh, you can just scan all of them and uh, email them to me. That's fine. And we'll just keep it all in one file uh, here at uh, this, uh, the tourism department. So uh, yes, so this signature page, worksheet A is super duper important. And if, they're, if you're uh, going through this and you're not exactly sure who uh, would be an affected business or resident or whoever, feel free to just give me a call or shoot me an email and we can help you figure that out. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky or even just finding some folks to, to communicate with them can be tricky. So we're, uh, we're happy to help you navigate that process. Uh, this just kind of explains what the, the, the barricade policy is of, you know, uh, who the uh, the city makes barricades and signs available to. Like I said, it's basically, um, in a nutshell, uh, nonprofits that are putting uh, community-wide events on. That's who the city usually provides, or typically provides barricades and signs to. Uh, so that just kind of spells that out. And this is an internal document that uh, once everybody, all the different department heads sign off on your application, once these appro approvals are finished, then it goes to the city manager for that final approval. And then we just scan it and send it back to you. Um, uh, we highly recommend, let me scroll back up and we'll be done, um, that this is turned in uh, well in advance of your event. Um, if it's, you know, turned in like the day before, um, that's typically not something that w works out. Um, uh, in, a couple weeks in advance is, uh, uh, fantastic for us. It, you know, technically it says, please allow five to seven business days. The more advanced notice you give us, the, the, um, uh, the better, but at least five to seven days is what we require uh, in order to get it uh, turned around and processed and approved. Uh, another note on here, if you're wanting to close uh, or utilize either Highway 33, which is uh, Noble Avenue, or Division Street, which is also a state highway, those state highways, you have to go through the Department of Transportation, um, and it has a phone number on here for their division. To, to talk with them, uh, we can't approve, we cannot approve that closure for you from the city's uh, side of things. So that's a state issue with state highways. So holler at ODOT if that's something that you, uh, you're interested in. So there's a number there you can call. And that's about it for the exclusive use application. Uh, you can either turn, uh, once you've completed one of these, you can drop it off uh, either at the tourism office, which is uh, 308, 308 South Division, uh, which is the old, uh, an old gas station there next to uh, Hoboken Coffee Roasters on Division Street, uh, or you can drop it off um, at City Hall, and that's fine too. Uh, they know how to get it to me. Uh, or really the easiest way is to scan it and email it. Um, you can send it to J Fortney, so J F O R T N E Y at cityofguthrie.com. Um, on the application, it says uh, V Rains, which is Verla's uh, Verla, Verla Rains email address. That's fine too. We both work in the same office. Um, this is an outdated phone number, so just ignore that. 282 uh, 2812 uh, is the phone number to reach us. Uh, if you have questions. Um, so, if you have any questions at all, phone call, email, happy to help. But this is the exclusive use uh, application if you want to use city property for your event. Thanks.